Well, let's try to do this without a tripod. It ain't gonna be easy. Okay, we got some onions in there. I'm gonna with, for chili. What I'll do is I'll cut up the meat and leave it semi-frozen. See, so you can have little hunks. So when you bite. Instead of having your meat totally all shredded up, a lot of times people will make chili and then you know the meat's in it, but you can't hardly tell. I want some nice little something you can bite into, sized pieces. So that's why I kind of leave it semi-frozen. I still kind of crumble some of it too. Because you do want some, you know, meat in there to where it's like mingled with the sauce and stuff. And I kind of like having a little chunk to bite into, and I, uh, my wife does too. So that's kind of how I do it. It's different. I, I don't think I've ever seen or heard anyone uh, say that's what they do. So I'm sharing. Try it. You might like it. It's kind of like having a piece of steak in your chili. It's just ground beef, but if you have it in a hunk, kind of fools your mouth into thinking you got something to chew on. I guess I don't know, but that's my thinking. That day I'm doing Bush's chili magic. I said I would do the different ones and compare. So far I've done two out of the three. Today I'm doing the hearty heat flavor. It's new. I think it's just a new version of hot because they ha used to have hot, mild, and medium. And now they kind of got new names. But the campfire one is good. I like it. If you're in the bush, chili magic. It's good stuff, I think. We eat it. And when I don't know what to make for dinner, that's what I'll do. Make some chili. And for in the winter time, like a cold winter day like today is, it seems like a good idea. I'll uh, do some muffins as well. When I was at the farm store, too. Dog for all it. When I was at the farm store, I bought this thing. I don't know if you've ever seen one. It's kind of like a big skillet from uh, making <laughs> corn muffins and cornbread. Makes them like little pie wedges. Nice. Okay, I got my meat ground. Uh, my what? I need to some more onion. I need to get my onion cut up and in there. I had a little extra in the refrigerator. Just cut it up. Don't have to be nothing fancy. Get it in there. Some onion. So I've got a pound of ground beef. What we do to save money on ground beef my, is we'll buy a family pack that's like four or maybe five pounds and separate it up into one pound size pieces and then wrap it up with in a baggie and then put the baggie wrapped up in freezer paper and then freeze it. They keep for quite a while and you know you save a little money that way. The meat here is browning nicely. I like using this big black Dutch oven.
because it seems to me like old school cooking using old iron pots is just right. It's the way my grandmother did it. Uh, my mom had fancy cookware. Uh, but when I got married, uh, I bought my wife a set of lodge skillets and it came with a, this Dutch oven. And we have used this thing for, since 1985. And it's 2023. We cooked a lot of different meals in this pot. It's kind of meant for camping or whatever, but if it works great, you could use it in the oven or on the stove top. It's a great idea to give someone that lasts forever if you take care of it. Okay, let's open the can. I don't think I've even shown the can yet. This is the Bush's Chili Magic. It's hearty heat. Hardy heat. And also you need a, 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 a pint sized jar of uh, tomatoes from the garden from last summer. That's another part of the deal here. So I'm using up stuff from my own garden. Whoops, sorry. Camera fell. Just kind of leaning it up against the lard. Hmm, and maybe I can get it better if I do it this way. And maybe reduce this a little. Hard, and I'm just like figuring this out as I go. I'm, I should know better. There's some grease in there from the lard that I started with, and the fact that the ground beef has fat in it. You might want to drain it, but heck, it's winter time, a little cold. I think you could probably use a little fat, if you know what I'm saying. Leave it in there. It's just a little beef fat and some pork lard. Yeah, this meat, this meal contains pork, because I started off with a spoonful of lard. It's just kind of standard procedure for me. Here goes my tomatoes from my garden. Save the jar and we can use it again. Now uh the chili mix. I need to open it. This isn't one of my better quality videos. I just kind of decided to throw it through. Ooh, smelling the inside of the lid, it smells spicy. It's not bad. It's got a little taste because some got on my finger. Let me get straight to the And yes, it has beans. To me, chili has beans. I like it that way. I thought that's why they were called chili beans. <laughs> okay. Give it a little stir. This is one of the easier things to make that I make. It's easy. A child could do this. We like chili. I like making it up way ahead. Right now it's 12.30 in the, in the afternoon. We're not going to eat till probably 4.30. So I'm uh, cooking the chili. Then I'm going to let it cool down. 
so we can reheat it later. Because everybody knows chili's better the second time you heat it. I, I don't, I don't, I doubt many people would disagree with it. Let's give it a little taste. Could use a little more heat, I think. Now, in order to get it to be a little more heat, I'll give it just the tiniest, tiny amount of this ground cayenne. I mean, that's I, I, I barely a pinched. I don't, I don't think that would even count as a pinch. But that's what I put in. And the same with this stuff, the crushed red pepper. Touch Yankees, a little bit of this is all it takes. See? I mean, that's not even a pinch. But that's what I usually put in to spice up our chili. And this is already a little spicy. This is probably going to be good now. And see what I mean? There'll be chunks of meat in there. Just hump. Like chunky soup, except it's Aunt Betty's chunky chili. Yeah! Have a great day, everybody. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. I don't do cooking videos that often, but a couple people actually think I'm good at cooking. That's very flattering to hear. And uh, thanks. Bye-bye.